Chapter 1 of Our Little Spanish Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Our Little Spanish Cousin by Mary F. Nixon Rowley. Chapter 1 The Christening. One of the things which Fernando remembered was the christening of his little sister. He was five years old and had no other brother or sister to play with, for Pablo, his wonderful big brother, was away at the naval school, and his older sister, Augustia, was at school in the convent. When Fernando's nurse told him that he had a little sister, he was delighted and begged to see her. And when all his relatives on both sides of the house came to see the baby christened, he was still more pleased. Fernando was a little Spanish boy, and in his country a great deal is thought of kinsfolk, for the Spanish are very warm-hearted and affectionate. So Fernando was glad to see all his aunts and uncles and cousins and all the friends who happened to be visiting them at the time. Fernando's father, the Señor Don Juan de Guzmán, was a courtly gentleman, and he bowed low over the ladies' hands and said, The house is yours, Señora, to each one. So, as the boy generally copied their fathers, Fernando assured his little cousins that he placed himself at their feet and welcomed them just as politely as his father had the older folk. What a wonderful time he had that day! First came the christening in the great cathedral, which towers above Granada, and in which lie buried the king and queen, Ferdinand and Isabella, in whose reign Columbus sailed away from Spain to discover America. The cathedral was so grand that it always made Fernando feel very strange and quiet, and he thought it was shocking that the baby cried when the priest poured water on her and baptized her, Maria Dolores Concepcion Isabel Inez Juanita. This seems a long name for such a tiny little mite, but there was a reason for every single name, and not one could be left out. Nearly all Spanish children are named Maria whether boys or girls, because the Spaniards are devoted to the Virgin Mary, and as the baby was born on the feast of the Immaculate Conception, she was called Concepcion. Isabel was for her aunt, and Inez was for her godmother, and Juanita for her father. Her name did not seem at all long to Fernando, for his name was Fernando Antonio Maria Alegria Francisco Ruy Guzman y Jimenez. Everyone called him Fernando, or Nando, and his long name had troubled him but once in all his gay little life. That time he had been naughty and had run away from his Aya, the nurse who always watches little Spanish children like a faithful dog, and he had fallen into the deep ditch beside the great aloe hedge. The aloes are stalwart plants with long leaves, wide extending and saw-toothed, and they are often planted close together so as to make hedgerows through which cattle cannot pass. The leaves of the aloe are sometimes a yard long, and they are very useful. From them are made strong cords, and also the alpargatas, or sandals, which the peasants wear, and the fibres of the leaf are separated from the pulp, and made into many things to wear. The central stem of the aloe grows sometimes twenty feet high, and it has a number of stems on the ends of which grow yellow flowers. The leaves are a bluish-green in colour, and look like long blue swords. The long hedgerows look very beautiful against the soft blue of the Spanish sky, but little Fernando did not see anything pretty in them as he lay at the bottom of the ditch, roaring lustily. "'Who's there?' demanded an American gentleman who was travelling in Spain as he came along on the other side of the hedge. And Fernando replied, "'Fernando Antonio Maria Alegria Francisco Ruy Guzmán y Jiménez, if there's so many of you, I should think you could help each other out, said the American. And when he finally extricated one small boy, he laughed heartily and said, as he took Fernando home, I should think a name like that would topple you over. After that, Fernando always called Americans the people who laugh. After the baby was christened, they went home through the narrow streets of the quaint old town. All the horses wore bells and as they trotted along, the tinkle, tinkle sounded like sleighing time in America. The reason for this is that in many places the streets are too narrow for two carriages to pass, and the bells give a warning that a vehicle is coming, 
so that the one coming from the opposite direction may find a white spot in the road, and there wait till the other carriage has passed. As the christening party went toward the home of Fernando, it passed a man driving two or three goats, and he stopped in front of a house, from a window of which was let down a string and a pail. Into this the man looked, and taking out a piece of money which lay in the bottom, he milked the pail full from one of the goats, and the owner pulled it up to her window again. It seems a strange way to get your morning's milk, but it is sure to be fresh and sweet, right from the goat, and there is no chance to put water in it, as milkmen sometimes do in America. The houses Fernando passed were all painted in many soft colors, and they had charming little iron balconies, to some of which palm branches were fastened, blessed palms from the church at Holy Week, which the Spaniards believe will keep lightning from striking the house. Fernando's house was much larger than the rest, for his father was a noble of one of the oldest families in Spain, whose ancestors had done many splendid things for the state in the olden times. The house had several balconies, from which hung down long sprays of blossoms, for every balcony railing was filled with flower-pots. There grew vines and flowers, nasturtiums, hyacinths, wallflowers, pinks and violets, their sweet scents filling the air. When the christening party entered the house, the baby was borne off to the nursery, and Fernando, no longer a baby, but a big boy with a baby sister, was allowed to go with the rest to the patio, where breakfast was served. The patio is one of the most charming things about the real Spanish houses. It is a court in the center of the house, larger than an ordinary room, with a marble floor and a huge awning, which protects it from the sun, yet leaves the patio open to the fresh air and sweet scents of the sunny out-of-doors. All the family gather in the patio, and it is the favorite lounging place for old and young. In the patio of the Señor Guzman's house were orange trees and jasmine, and all colors of violets bloomed around the marble rim of the fountain, which was in the center. What a wonderful thing that christening feast was to Fernando! There was much laughing and talking, and such good things to eat. When all were through eating, little Juanita's health was drunk, and her godfather proposed her health and recited a poem he had composed in her honor. Queridita Aijada, plegue al cielo que tu vida sea feliz y placentera, cual arroyo cristalino que atraviesa la pradera, su padrino Francesco. Please, God, my little godchild, that your life as pure may be as a laughing brook which through the valley runneth ever limpidly. Your godfather Francesco wishes fervently. This very much delighted everyone, and so with laughter and merriment the christening feast was over. End of chapter 1